Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, I guess the last uh, panel discussion before we wind up this amazing conference today, dedicated to Connected TV. Um, extremely, uh, still from an ADEX point of view, very small amount of media, uh, however, making big waves with, with a crazy growth rate of, uh, I think, anywhere quoted between 47 to 58% by, by various reports. Uh, it's, it's going to be as big as half of the video impressions in the US, uh, and would India follow is the big question that all of us are uh, looking forward to if CTV would rule the whole video consumption in India. So this panel, um, I would like to invite all my panelists. Uh, uh, of course, I think they, uh, Nidhi, uh, uh, Mr. Sandil, uh, Mr. Sujay, and uh, uh, Nikhil. All right, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, and so to start with, let's understand uh, in terms of uh, of course, from morning, we have all looked at various aspects of CTV uh, in terms of CTV being used in impact, CTV being creatively used in terms of content, in, in terms of the kind of empowerment CTV does with, with the kind of data, AI, all the tech that it brings, um, which never existed for linear TV. Um, so the other aspect that we would be focusing on is also the kind of uh, advertising frequencies that um, CTV uh, is challenged with to that extent, or is it really challenged? Is it, is it really okay with it, right? So I would first uh, like to invite all my panelists to bring in first their perspective from there. We, we have an uh, interesting panel. We have ad tech uh, in terms of media smart. Uh, we have brands uh, L'Oreal and Bank of Baroda with very two different perspectives from a finance sector and and, and, and uh, consumer point of view. We also have, uh, you know, a publisher and, and you know, in, in terms of content uh, from ABP. So what are your perspective? Who would like to go first uh, uh, of CTV from where you come from as an advertiser, as a ad network, and also as in, in terms of us? Yes, Shall yes I? Mr. Sandil. Yes. Okay, very good evening to all. And thanks for the introduction. Um, from a, a PFSI sector, uh, we are at the advantage that we have the uh, uh, targeted customer as a profile we have from uh, a child, say, senior citizen. Thug. So it's a very uh, different uh, or very complex target segment, which we ac actually as a brand can uh, target for our advertisement. So here, let me go to the topic uh, is uh, really the uh, frequency of ad uh, being con being a challenge for uh, the brands or the consumer to view the brand in a, pers in a uh, certain perspective. So I'll, I'll just give you um, a small example of uh, a recent um, um, a campaign which we did. Uh, it was uh, almost we are now cricket. It's now IPL season. So let me relate to uh, one of the campaign for cricket. We did a campaign uh, for uh, this. Uh, India Bangladesh series, women series, which is going on today also. That's a match, and in fact, uh, what we did was uh, we positioned uh, the product. Uh, the, this is where I can say that positioning and personalization also uh, come a lot of uh, leverage when it comes to add uh, uh, fatigue or frequency or uh, the targeted segment. Here, what we did was we had a product called Bob Bro. We recently introduced the product is a for uh, uh, the segment of uh, 16 to 25 year youth for them. So we positioned uh, this product and where uh, uh, the ad was uh, with our own endorser, Shafali Verma. She is also a young uh, uh, cricket uh, player who is now playing in the women's team. So the ad was on Shafali Verma. The ad was uh, for a product called Bobro. Bobro is 16 to 25 and we are targeting on the uh, on TV and for connected TV, particularly, this was exclusively on fan code. Let me tell you, fan code was the exclusive uh, viewer for, sorry, broadcaster for this event. So we saw that uh, there was only one ad, okay? This one ad, we have to play for the entire series, single product, but I was very confident that the target segment is going to be really uh, the correct uh, positioning is there, so there won't be any much of the ad fatigue. So you're saying the, but po the power of targeting. Yeah, the power of yeah, the power the of targeting. Of frequency. Then come to the frequency. 
we every see we can't because all one shoe fits all doesn't apply to all campaigns so as and when we so we started this campaign there was one one match after one match we sought we sat back with the details of the output we saw that a single ad which ran for multiple times in with the ctv and our uh, that click to ratio or the call to action was very high but we we could we could manage that uh, level of click to ratio so what we thought is that let optimize it and maybe we should now uh, focus on more on the action than rather than on the viewership so we optimized on the we kept a frequency and also on the viewership so this is one very critical example i'm just telling that positioning and your uh, uh, optimization of campaign plays a lot of role when we actually um, uh, 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 we, we give our advertisement or any campaigns we run in the connected TV. So this is one part yeah, I just uh, wanted. Thank you. I think that brings in uh, all the you know the armor that CTV gives us, uh, moving away from how linear TV planning was happening, and can we use all of these levers to bring in a, a much more control on media and, and the way it gets deployed? to hear some more views from uh, yeah, please oh, perfect smart, i think yeah. it's amazing yeah. um, i think media smart we've been at the forefront of building the category in the country we've been doing this from 2020 so i think it's amazing to see for me that we've moved from the topic at ctv here to stay to ctv creating frequency ad fatigue like we've really i think moved quite yeah. quite fast on that so i think it's um, it's nice actually if if uh, if that's the topic, but I think how is this topic shaping up if that's the general question? If you look at how India is growing as an economy, right? I mean, it's growing at the fastest rate. It's one of the most powerful economies in the world today. Why is this economy growing? Is because it's obviously penetrating towns of India which didn't have uh, internet penetration. Internet is powering uh, the growth of the economy. What that does is today uh, a smart TV is not the privilege of a certain NCCS yeah. category I, or we're tier blessed one. to be a country where data is so cheap. I mean, Absolutely. U US doesn't have this yeah, advantage. I mean, India is, by the way, top 10 most data per GB yeah. uh, cheapest in the world, just FII. So I think that makes internet penetration quite high, quite accessible. Geo has obviously made a revolution in that front. Second part of it is internet and India also is an app first country. So in case you guys don't know, India is the second highest app downloading country in the world. Now technically that sounds great, but we also have population on our side. We are a 1.2 billion country. So just FYI, but I think we are a pretty app first country. What that enables is not only do you have internet, but you have access to do use the internet in various ways. That means today you can buy a TV at the click of a button, which will get installed at your home by tomorrow, even if you are in Unnao or the remotest part of the country. Third, I mean, Smart TV itself is no longer a privileged item which you buy when you have a certain income and then you buy a thin smart TV. 90% of the TVs made were all smart. I don't know what the 10% were, but 90% of the TVs produced last year were all smart. And an average TV can cost anywhere between $100 to $150, which predominantly means anywhere between 8,000 to 15,000 rupees. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's the cost of few people's dinner at some right. fancy clubs in Mumbai. So that's that. That's super cheap. So what that does is you add those three points together, which is accessibility of internet, yep. penetration of internet within the country, accessibility of buying a smart TV. That makes connected TV really, really big. Mm -hmm. So that means it's obviously here to stay and it's obviously going to grow. Mm -hmm. Now that that established, obviously, where there are users, there are advertisers who want to put an ad there. And if their advertiser wants to put the ad there, there are many options of how that ad can reach the particular user. And that gets me to the point that I think we live in the world today that it's not important where the ad is shown. It's important who the ad is shown to. And I think if we start focusing on who the ad is shown to, the frequency and the ad fatigue and ad favorability probably could be moderately managed. Yeah. Not completely, absolutely, I think that's a myth but I think moderately managed. But if we focus continuously on where my ad is showing, then obviously you have a if larger challenge. If we continue challenge. to live in the erstwhile world, then, then we wouldn't really ride the disruption I mean, that you, CTV brings to this. I want uh, my ad to be in the best content show on TV. Yeah. I want my ad to be in the best linking road while I go home. I want my ad to be in the best newspaper. And by the way, I want my ad to be on social channels. 
I am the same guy. You just showed me the ad at every possible touch point. But since all these walled gardens don't talk to each other, hmm. then that's what creates ad. I think we'll fatigue. get to the whole thing about the wall gardens and the reasons for ad frequency. But but I think the, you, you, the key point is there is disruption not just in the format of, of streaming, there is disruption uh, in internet, in access, in, in, in technology, uh, even at the LED TVs, every single TV is a smart TV, so the adoption is going to be high. And so there is a need for disruption of how we as media planners and how brand advertise, brands, and how everybody thinks about planning, uh, which is where versus who, uh, right? So what, what do you say? Uh, for that, Suchai, uh, from the point of L'Oreal and all your other uh, experiences on CTV. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question, Vaita. I think uh, while both the gentlemen were talking about I actually went down the memory lane and I was just thinking that uh, once upon a time we used to talk about media, we used to talk about a lot of things and then connected TV and everything. And now today I'm just looking at the logo, I'm like, connected TV conference, like how things have evolved. And uh, I think for us as a marketers and uh, especially the ones who are uh, spending time on digital marketing. Uh, in my opinion, there are three laws who have kind of affected us, and some of them have actually been talked about in a way by Nikhil. I think Moore's law, Crider's law, Butter's law, how we have figured out the faster processing, faster way to communicate, and more ways to store data or content. These three laws have kindly, kind of changed the game uh, and when, when we think as an advertiser and when we think as an opportunity, we definitely want to be there at the best place in the best possible way, showing uh, it to the consumer as uh, Sentil was mentioning that, hey, I want to show it to uh, this person, whether this person is a young person or whether this person is a retired person or planning something like that. So I think it's an exciting time for us and we as ad advertisers get this opportunity to probably target our uh, messaging to the consumer. But at the same point of time, as more and more uh, this, I would say, this clutter, competition, and everything is increasing, we as advertisers and brands also need to be very, very cognizant of the fact is that when we are advertising and how we are advertising uh, needs to be in that context. And that's, that's when I say that, yes, the first C, we are targeting the consumer. But at the same point of time, what is the content, which is the second C, how we are communicating, which is the third C, and the fourth C is that what is the context? Because yes, consumer might be consuming a content at some point of time or maybe going through the election poll results. Do I want to actually be there? Yes, I know that there will be a lots of eyeballs there. But will that make more sense for me to be there in that context? I think a lot of brands probably sometimes miss that thing. So we, we move away from the rule of seven to the rule of four Cs. Uh, for, so moving uh, like from the frequency I meant, uh, the power of seven frequency versus uh, getting into four Cs would solve for that and we, we just deploy it right, uh, focusing on the four Cs. Uh, so you have been doing content uh, and of, of course in, in terms of uh, as a media uh, house, I mean br br broadcaster and everything. So how, do you, how would you look at this whole opportunity of creative TV? So this is very interesting for us because with Paul Linear and with CTV coming in, this is an extension. So why we build the engagement, we also build the reach, which is important. Uh, ad fatigue is something which, uh, like showing the same ad to the same users is something else. But as a content broadcaster, what I think that there has to be a sink in of the storytelling of the brand so that the user sees it more. Because we are now customizing content for the CTV. We are planning, uh, as, in, as we speak, news is the most consumed content on CTV globally, right? So there is something that is happening on the news side, but yes, News Plus is also something that we need to cater to. And there where brands play a very important role because uh, while a user is watching news, he also wants to build up a story that, you know, okay, why I'm showing this ad? There has to be, again, a sync up so that there is no ad fatigue, and there has to be a different formats of the, the brands presenting that uh, message to the users. So CTV that way is also preferential TV on demand. I, I want a certain kind of content, so I chose to move there, and I, I now have the power to choose. Uh, so does that mean all of us as advertisers 
or as a brand, as uh, a network, whichever way it is, focus a lot more on creative asset than who we are targeting to? Is, is, is that something you would look at? Yeah, I think Laurie, yes, please. Yeah, certainly creativity is one thing that uh, can differentiate for the uh, uh, ad, particularly whatever kind of uh, frequency is there. If there is creativity and uh, uh, bringing some kind of uh, inquisitiveness in the ad, that will certainly differentiate because uh, uh, the, 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 the very fact that uh, connected TV is uh, growing at, at this pace is that because uh, people don't get bugged off ads and other things, they want ad free. But when, when it comes to, you see certain, there are very good ads that really you want to see the ad more than the program, you just move on to see when is that ad coming. Now also in now in TV also there are many many such ads that we love to see that that for the last I think the Swiggy ad was exceptional everybody will agree that you will always any time you show that we we'll want to see that so there's a lot of creativity and inquisitiveness these brands can bring in which can really uh, uh, see that the the consumer is not uh, having um, this kind of ad fatigue in fact I was just uh, referring to one of the ads we released uh, ad, it's not an ad it's just a uh, L band or Aston band we released sometime in the IPL uh, the, the consumer is so different that you know, I, saw, I asked him why, why did you see the ad what 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 did you like in that I said that uh, I always used to see Bank of Burden a different color so this time it was something different so I wanted to know uh, what what exactly you are doing more than see the color itself is uh, uh, creating a differentiation on what uh, the consumer is relating to that ad because in an IPL is hardly five seconds the ad is coming. Similarly, in connected TV also there is limited time frame where we, we brands can spend on very uh, huge budget. We want to run through the campaign, so very limited time we have. So certainly, the creativity and inquisitiveness is uh, uh, more uh, 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 going on the top. Uh, rather than ad or what is the communication, it is uh, bringing that interest in the consumer. So certainly it will, once the interest of the consumer is there to see that ad repeatedly, I'm sure that there, there will not be fatigue and uh, we can actually optimize our positioning for that particular ad if creativity is completely built in that ad. Is that uh, also like the amount of investment in terms of production or all of you see it more in terms of Let's first go by who, who are we targeting and, and then suit the advertising, uh, right? So, so the, suit the kind of format of the content and everything. So have there been any kind of creative assets at scale or, or any other innovation? So I think uh, before even I try to answer that, uh, I think as brands and marketers, often we try and do things is that we try and question the media, we try and question the effect efficacy, efficiency, effectiveness of how it media is done and all. And seldom we take this opportunity to question ourselves, stating that was that ad good enough to be played there or not? Was, were we able to tell the story properly or not? Because at the end of the day, in a plethora of content which a consumer is consuming, we are there as those breaker points. And in that breaker points, technically we are disrupting their viewing experience. But in that viewing experience, are we going to add any value when we are telling our brand story, seldom as marketers we don't invest much of time uh, and rigor uh, in creating that correct narrative. So first that story and narrative is very, very important. What is that simpler message you're trying to give it to the consumer? That once that is kind of sorted out, I think that is when you should look at the nuance of a platform where we look at, okay, fine, this kind of format, connected TV format, okay, is there some kind of engagement, okay, uh, can I uh, create some kind of frequency, and all those things, in, in my opinion, come secondary if you have figured out the simpler message, and he was raising a very valid point, good ads, good ads, I want to watch that ad, when was the last time you wanted to watch an ad, no, probably, or maybe one or two in the last uh, uh, couple of years. My name is Karistas, man. <laughs> uh, I think I fully agree with Sujay. I think my opinion absolutely uh, is, is quite relevant to what Sujay is saying because I think, I mean, I'll come to the CTV part of it, but today we are all mobile penetrated. We know 85%, 87% of the dollars are getting spent on ad on mobile, but how many of you are actually making vertical ads? You're still making horizontal ad because it's easy to shoot it and it's great the, looking. The digital uh, world has so moved. 
it is very minuscule, Jyoti. Let's be very, let's be realistic, right? I mean, your larger brands are still making horizontal ads with a large screen, and then obviously it gets its share of mobile wallet. That's how it is, and I think the reason is there is a clear disconnect in what creativity inspires and what tech can enable you to do. And it is very important to define that very categorically because creativity can come in both forms. Now, I would love to say that, you know, L'Oreal can make seven different ad cuts with the same asset from different locations. No, it's not possible. I think that, that, that I don't think any brand has that kind of budgets to be, uh, you know, doing that in the realistic world of it. But obviously they can and they have all the uh, uh, proprietary rights to do it. But when it comes to advertising, you have two to three assets, which is divided into your 30, 20 seconders, 10 seconders, cut into six seconders, which is cool. Where does the creativity come in? Now, creativity can come in tech. Now, the, you can have various formats of ads. It could be L bands. It could yeah, be coming Zometo in. Zomato ad in the it current be, IPL yeah, season. I mean, uh, without yeah. naming any brand, I think there are very interesting examples of doing it. But then I can, as a consumer, also have full right to pause your creativity at any point of time. I will take a subscription and say, I don't want it. Now, as a publisher, you can still say, Sorry, I said on every content it's no ads, but on live, you have to see any ads, right? So I think there is an interesting gameplay between, you know, what creatives and creativity can do, what tech can enable, and obviously there are technologies like dynamic, dynamic creative optimizations, there is ad sequencing, and I see a lot of the brands within the programmatic landscape that we work with are so clear about it. They're saying, okay, this is FC1, user ID or TV ID, Next time, no ads there, okay? We'll have the next ad. And they give us four or five assets to ensure that the teams are utilizing those assets, right? Which is smart, but then again, I mean, there is only limited users which are active at a point of time. Now, that, that is where tech comes in. And you have to understand how programmatic bidding works. I mean, you need to serve an ad. That's how the ad is served. So I think that those are interesting plays at it, but I think there is no, like he said, there's no absolute answer. There's a lot of work that goes on the marketing side to really, really define who that consumer is. But then again, the definition cannot be absolute because probably you know the user from an offline standpoint. I know probably your user from the mobile habits that the user has better than you. Because I have access to multiple applications that he is probably yeah. watching ads on or is accessing and stuff like that. So I think that's where the integration of tech, marketing, creative comes in and that creates great ads which are recallable. And I think one of the ones that you said is Karistas, and obviously the other one is probably cred. We love watching cred ads, right? Yes. Why? Maybe it's not doing anything to cred, but it's a great ad. I don't know. I should not say it, but but I, I'm I'm sure it's a great ad. Everybody loves it, right? Yeah. So I, I think um, uh, we we should definitely uh, double dip on the access to tech and data as to how we should leverage this uh, in in terms of. Uh, using CTV from a targeting and also from an advertising point of view. One of the other interesting uh, point that came up was uh, what Sujay was talking about, that the in, in a connected TV environment, we're so immersed, and it, it was by choice that we're watching something, uh, and not that this was, as you were saying, uh, Kapil Sharma was the only available show during COVID, and then, you know, you didn't have options then. Uh, but, but then I think you, you chose to watch a particular series, and you don't want your flow to be disrupted. Uh, so the more creative all of us as marketers and advertisers get uh, with respect to the kind of asset that we deploy through CTV, the better it is. Sometimes disruption also doesn't come from what you think. And I'll ask a simple question. How many of you in this panel have seen Squid Games? I couldn't everyone? keep up with the Squid whole game. series. Yeah. So. yeah, okay, everyone. How many have seen Money Heist? Yeah. All of you, right? Yeah. None of you are Spanish, none of you are Korean. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you doing and watching these? Yeah, I, I it's, think the it's your evolution because there was content which was getting, you couldn't watch anything. People were dying during COVID. You had to watch series and thereby it's, it's yeah. forced content which you liked and now you've built a habit of it. Regimentalization, right? So that, that brings us to a very interesting topic of profiling, right? Profiling the CTV customer. Um, it, it signals more than how many hours they're watching and their age and demographic or the geography. It, it signals their interests, which is what the digital world gave us, uh, right? But with the benefit of linear TV where because this is immersive content, this is, this is fantastic. So you have the benefit of knowing some bit of a profile of the customer because of the content that they're watching. At the same time, you have the targeting ability at all uh, you know, cuts in, in terms of gender, demographic, and hopefully in the future, some 
uh, affluence cuts, uh, which currently we, we do not have enough uh, data on CTV uh, there. So what, what's your experience in terms of how you have leveraged targeting um, in, in terms of very effective deployment? Like we spoke about efficacy. So effective deployment using targeting. See, when it comes to digital as a media, and I'm not even touching connected TV at this moment, I, I think the medium always gave some amount of better signals, I would say. So whether it is like the earlier days of like just doing simple idioms hmm. to uh, doing how things evolved in terms of mobile marketing, and now we are talking about connected TVs and all, there were a little bit of uh, probabilistic signals. Uh, and of course, when you combine them with deterministic signals with your own PII data, and then you try and match them in that entire uh, digital ecosystem, you try and figure out, okay, fine, what is the, probably the best possible genres, platforms, and content, and then you try and create a build, build an eco ecosystem around it. So of course, uh, when, when it comes to targeting options and all, the good part is that because slowly, uh, and now coming back to the connected TV part of it, slowly the penetration is increasing. And uh, because it gives you uh, the flexibility to probably uh, target a certain geography, certain cohorts, or even when, when we sometimes try and do is that we try and target screen sizes and all, with an underlying assumptions, which is not always correct, that okay, fine, bigger screen sizes may be equal to more affluent households. Just a surrogate. No sure shot signals yeah. because uh, there it, can be a smallish a households with a 70 inch yes. TV. But then at least those are still some amount of prob better probabilistic signals. Uh, reminds me of the days when on Facebook, I mean, this was not meta, on Facebook the only affluent cut was handset the targeting. smartphone, handset. Handset, handset was the only signal. Yeah. But then at, at least it gives you a little bit of. Uh, uh, a better targeting, Absolutely. Uh, which we as advertisers, we definitely try and do. And uh, of course, I think from the connected part of it, because uh, the content consumption habit has changed probably more than a decade by and I'll probably say even before COVID, when there was linear TV and mobile, while you were probably watching TV, you are also on mobile, and then during the ad break, you're probably doing something. Those days, what we used to try is that, okay, fine, during the ad breaks, how can we probably try and figure out that six inch screen which is there on your hand? Today, it might be connected TV and still. So there might be an ad which will be served on your connected TV, and you are probably watching it on your mobile, you are probably checking some Twitter feed or something. So more and or less, then we have the other problem of the kid watching cartoons on an 85 inch TV. <laughs> That's again, see, that's why I said it. These are all probabilistic signals and not deterministic signals. I wish, yeah. uh, like, uh, as an advertiser, everybody wants to know that Bullseye TG, what he or she is doing, and then doing that. But then, uh, that if, if we start doing that, that is, yeah. I think, invasion in privacy beyond <laughs> the point if you True. become too. Uh, that's, th that, that's also another thing. I mean, it's, one is uh, the privacy laws and other things where our metrics for targeting are limited. But I think there is another elephant in the room in terms of wall gardens, which we're all aware. And I, we do think one of the aspects of ad frequency going high could be fragmentation of what we watch, the content we watch. But at the same time, you know, in, in terms of uh, Woot, uh, versus a Hotstar, versus a Google ecosystem, uh, you know, the data isn't really uh, accessible from one to the other. Uh, uh, from an ad tech point of view, uh, how should we look at this? Uh, because this is a very primary concern because of which the frequency gets toppled up, right, topped up. Right? Uh, there's a three frequency on Wood Plus, there is a, then I switch over to uh, sports, uh, so I'm on Hotstar, and, and then another three frequency, and end of day I have a 15 frequency. <laughs> I think the world is obviously, if you look at the global economics, large part of the global economy is running even on connected TV, on programmatic ad spends. Why is it so? Because I think you have some sense of meritocracy on non-duplication of reach. Yeah. Right? I think that's why it is. But I think if you look at, I mean, year one, I was talking about CTV being Gen Z, and we did research, and that's how it came out. Year two, when we did the same research with 1,000 plus respondents, saying an average household in India, in India, has got over three plus people watching connected TV. The average age actually went all from 25 to 65 in some use cases, and which is where we realized that 
you know, if I ask you how many of you have connected TV in the room, and I've done this game many times, by Close the way. Close to 100%, I guess. Actually, you will be surprised that they may not even raise their hands. But if you ask the same question differently, it's like, when was the last time you recharged your DTH subscription? And suddenly all hands will go up. And they'll say, yeah, I don't think I did Tata cable recharge like a very long time back. And suddenly, this term called connected TV, which is made by us people on this side in night tech, uh, you know, made it sound very fancy. I think a lot of people are there, but they just don't know they're already using it. And yeah. going back to uh, the problem of unifying frequency, I think it's a problem that the industry uh, overall as an ecosystem between marketers and ad tech and uh, 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 we all have to solve because um, at the end of the day, the user yeah. is the center focus of everything that we all do, whether in terms of targeting. Yes, like Sujoy said, right, you know, Sujoy was very clear that I could target a Lodha Palava with 65 inch screen and that could be the best proxy that you get, but it comes back to your point that my kid was watching it. Now, I have no way to control it. And I think as hygienic, as uh, responsible advertisers, it's your duty to get the best targeting metric, but you know where you have to draw the line, right? I think uh, uh, just because you have access to my phone doesn't mean you're reading into my apps. It's as simple as that, you know? So I think um, there are a few points touched upon there. And I think going back to frequency, what's happening now is that you want your ad to be at the best places. now. Technically, Jyoti, you are the same person who was actually standing in front of a lift. You saw that ad of a brand. When you got into the lift, you got up, you went home, you just threw your bag, you switched on the television, you said, yeah, let me watch my content. You saw the same ad, it's the same Jyoti. And then while you were going to sleep, you were just scrolling on your mobile and you saw an ad again. Not maybe in one app, maybe on gaming you saw an app, then social you saw an ad, then e-commerce you saw an app, I can go there also. That's also, by the way, multiple genres of advertising now. You are the same user who saw the same ad so many times. Now, I don't yeah. know whether it creates an impact of favorability or fatigue, right. but clearly people are getting their shit right on targeting. Maybe they're getting you right. At least there's one positive to it. <laughs> what but you're I saying is it's the same problem in a new era. Uh, we never questioned whether across print, across TV, across radio, was there an ad frequency problem. Uh, and to a large digital, extent. Digital, we are, we are micromanaging digital, you know. If connect, yep. I was telling you outside that if connected TV was still a part of TV planning, the revenue dollars would have, have been double, I can assure you that, 110%, right? Yeah. And I think, uh, which is where I think you're seeing a large debate between this current IPL being streamed offline with a separate ecosystem and online through a very separate ecosystem. And there's a huge debate. Where are the ad dollars growing? Where is the money? Is it offline or is it on connected TV? And I think... Uh, you will have to eventually deal with that. Is this, um, uh, while we say that we're ba at the base of it, questioning is at frequency really an issue, uh, is it also because of do approaching CTV from the way of planning, planning CTV in the same way as linear TV, um, choosing content pieces, uh, right? And uh, is there benefit in doing that versus should we just do it the way we do it in digital as to who to target and to not think about where? Uh, I would like this question to be uh, picked up by uh, you, Nithi. Uh, yeah. So this is a very interesting space, as I said, that CTV has revolutionized everything. Everything that comes easy is accepted. So connected TV came at, with ease, and that's why. For broadcasters, it's a very interesting space again because what I think that for our legacy content that we have already spent so much of money in production, that is again on CTV. So we bring that in a different format. And that is a leverage. That is leveraging not even the OEMs, brands, you know, uh, but us also. So fragmenting it into a very interesting uh, uh, content piece is what we look at. And plus, we are building new content. So I think so with different delivery and creating news plus content, just not news, I can create a fast channel now, having you know just the headlines, or I can create a, 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 a different channel which has just the newsroom bulletin, catering different segments, and that is not diluting my brand, but that is, that is actually giving an ease to the users that you know what they want to see. So I see that from that uh, point of view. I just want to add to that, mm -hmm. as you asked uh, regarding the planning, it's certainly going to increase multifold and with the kind of insight and data we are getting from the each and every campaigns we are running and with the connected TV and uh, 
the statistics and with you know Chennai coming into picture, there is extreme uh, uh, increase going to be seen in the kind of planning, particularly for uh, CTV campaigns. No, I think, I think uh, uh, on one end we have uh, the luxury of legacy content, uh, which people are actually very hooked to and will continue to be the way India is, right? And, and it's going to be very diverse, all the regional content and uh, everything, and that will continue to boom. We're, we're also a country which loves movies and, you know, we'll continue to do extreme number of uh, movies and cinemas are really going down, but then CTV might... Uh, replace the whole cinema, uh, the, the planning which used to happen towards cinema there uh, in a different way. So that's one angle of content, extremely that's indulging right. content. Yeah, it's, it's already it's happening. All happening of so course, documentaries, yeah. small mm -hmm. episodes is what users are hooked to. In fact, yeah. we're also coming up with something which is like a news content but in an episode format. Hmm. So mm -hmm. that's a planning that we've done, you know, towards right. uh, that we see that the users are consuming short format content, not short as in uh, in an episode format content. So yes, that kind of planning for the viewership is important. So I I is it is it li like the holy grail where we're able to indulge in all the fantastic content from the production houses at extremely high cost, at the same time you have short video formats, user-generated content, uh, and everything going there, the YouTube and you know all this, uh, the channels, and uh, somewhere here we have the power of data, as Sandil was saying, of monitoring it and doing that. Does that make the whole advertising very powerful or more complex? It, it is becoming it's both. It, it's it's it becoming both. complex, but I, I have a, a slightly different point of view when it comes to like different formats of content, different sizes of content. At the end of the day, the content needs to be good. Hmm. Nowadays, we say that the cinema is dying and then there is a competition from OTTs and connected TV. Cinema is dying not because people are watching o OTTs and not. People are watching good content on OTT. Hmm. People are no longer tolerant about shit films and that's the reason they are not lining up to watch those movies. It's uh, no longer when, the when, when you have an Oppenheimer, When you have an Oppenheimer, you have a 3 a.m. show also yeah. at yeah. a Palladium. But then you have empty movie theaters as well because you need to have good content. So one piece is that the content, second the quality of content, how engaging that content. Then there is always a debate of short versus long versus this. So you have platforms and we have somebody from content here. She will, she can vouch for it. I can say that maybe there will be a lot of legacy content which will be probably a 30 minute documentary from 10 years back yes. which people might, might be still watching. 25 minutes of that episode yes. because that content is good right. and then there are content which are like probably 10 seconds may 10 news something like that tuck 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 you exactly. flick it it is just that you need to understand the audience package the content accordingly first of all the content needs to be good and then as ad, uh, as advertiser as brands then it is also our responsibility to ensure that what kind of uh, advertisement we want to create to connect with there is it a static ad it is is it some kind of video or nowadays, which a lot of advertisers and brands are doing, is that how you are intelligently getting uh, embedded into that yeah. content piece, so that yeah, the entire really content true. marketing, entire IP, uh, right. I, content IPs and everything which is getting generated, I think that is where the next play will happen. It's already happening for past couple of Absolutely. years. Absolutely. So, I mean, and that's like the view through rates that we measure for interesting ads also, uh, are usually like um, uh, rapidly at like 75% or something unheard of if, if the ad is so good, uh, right? Uh, typically it's like 25%, 30% drops. Uh, but all of this is on the power of data. Um, on a CTV, maybe seven days, not even seven days, I mean the day you launch, you're measuring it, uh, right? Immediately, you, you can course correct, you can adapt. Um, and uh, uh, Nikhil, I would want you to talk about like what is it that we have as tools and frameworks uh, which, which we should use in the CTV environment? I think great question. I think <clears throat> what does CTV empower you? How is it different from linear TV? I mean, we're talking connected TV and we need to understand how is it empowering advertisers and why, are, why is it the talk of the town? In many years and most of the time, your media silos have remained the same. The Excel sheet looks the same. I have been there. It hasn't changed for a very long time. It's the same Excel sheet. There is no single column added. There are two columns added in the last three, four years, if you understand. One is called influencer marketing. Second is called connected TV. 
everybody wants to talk about it. Everybody wants to know your plan on influencer marketing and connected television. I remember in 2011, we used to be in L'Oreal. I used to be in L'Oreal and Facebook was the thing now and we had Shabang then, you know. Harshil used to come and teach us how to do uh, digital marketing because he's like, yeah, it's okay. We are a media company, right? Digital is new. It's like connected TV is new, but everybody is getting onto the bandwagon because the user is there and we need to understand where the user is. That's where the dollars are going to go, right? It's not a debate between connected TV and linear. They both coexist, but connected TV is able to provide you better means to reach the user, attributable ways to means reach the user, and some of those attributes can be size of screen, manufacturer, location of the television. Mm -hmm. Could that television IP be linked to your mobile, thereby understanding in the, within the same household the IP and thereby the other devices connected to the same IP. Now, imagine a situation where you as an advertiser are showing an ad. Let's say Bank of Baroda shows an ad. And Bank of Baroda also wants to say, eventually I showed an ad, what do I want from it? I don't want him to remember my ad, right? Oh, great ad, Bank of Baroda. Now tomorrow morning I will go and open an account at Bank of Baroda. And come on, be real, it doesn't happen. It really should happen. But what do you really want from a digital perspective? You want that there should be an engagement. You should find out about Bank of Baroda. Yeah? This was a really good ad. Or maybe he should inquire. Maybe it was a really good offer, which is about a saving scheme, which he should go about. Now, there's an action required. It's called call to action. Now, how do you enable that with Connected TV? You have tech today, which probably is, we call it household sync at Media Smart, and there are many other techs in the industry, where once an ad is showed within 24 to 48 hours, you can retarget the user within the same IP household, nudge him to perform an action. Now, let's say if Bank of Baroda ad was really nice and he had a recall of it and he really liked the ad, and we nudged the user and said, you know what, Bank of Baroda, and he said, ah, this is nice. He clicked on it, maybe he installed the Bank of Baroda app, maybe, or maybe he went to the website and filled up a form and ask somebody to call him back, that is where the user journey is ending. And I think that's what makes connected TV amazingly unique versus linear TV where one, from a content standpoint, linear TV is all about programmed viewing. You want to see Big Boss? Saturday ko dekh lena Salman Khan aayega. Mere ko nahi aane ka hai Saturday at baje Saturday ko. Mere ko Sunday morning ko 11 o'clock ko dekhne ka hai. Which makes me, that makes me connected TV user. I will watch when I want to watch, how I want to watch. Second, from an advertiser's perspective, hey, I can target the screen size, I can target the location, I can target the type of manufacturer, I can target the type of content, I can understand the genre, I can have a certain amount of frequency capping across multiple content genres within the same television handset, and I can understand the mobile journey after that. Makes it super awesome. The longest serving debate was TV pe ad dikhaya hua kya? Connected TV can answer that question in a certain way and form. Yes. That's the way I look at it. I, I think in, in terms of getting all the signals of engagement from the user to us taking control of creating those engagements, uh, right, is, is the power of Connected TV there. Um, with that, I, I think we, we are almost to the end of the session. Uh, any closing words in terms of the collaboration? Because I have an interesting panel of brands, of, uh, 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 you know, broadcasters and ad tech sitting on this panel. Uh, we, we have spoken enough of data, of creative assets, and, and about how to target. Um, any, any next, you know, uh, closing lines on collaboration? Awkward silence, but... Uh, I, yeah. I think so, I that's, like, that's yeah. a very difficult question, because uh, I think so, currently as we speak, the three verticals are working uh, as in, on their own uh, side, making money, capturing viewership, and making that visibility there. So that collaboration has to be there, but uh, yes, with tech integrations, with uh, data, and uh, with good content, that's yes. together. Yeah. Okay, to that, uh, we, we say, uh, uh, we uh, wind up this session, and also, uh, I, I think, uh, invite, uh, because this is the last uh, panel, uh, I, I, I hope we give enough food for thought on how to approach CTV. Uh, thank you all. Uh, thank Any you questions, panelists. anyone? We are happy to yeah, take. Yeah, should we open up for, uh, is there time for q and I, I don't know. We can should take check? definitely yeah? one okay. question for a couple you. of questions. Yeah, yeah. Anybody? In the meanwhile, I'll thank Nikhil for promoting Bank of Baroda, and I'm sure that you'll have a very good <laughs> customer for us. At the I just opened my account, account yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think there are genuine possibilities for collaboration. Just to summarize, I think, uh, imagine a situation where in the morning you have a bad hair day, okay? 
and you're getting up, you put your content of choice because you get up in the morning, you like listening to music, maybe. And that music video, in a certain way, has an ad which shows to improve your bad hair day, you should have this amazing shampoo from the best brand, whichever it might be. Now, suddenly, it prompts you to remember, wow, I could have a better hair day going to office. And then you have the facility to obviously retarget that ad to the user on mobile where they click it and with a blanket or a Zepto, it gets delivered to your house in 10 minutes. So before leaving, yeah. you've actually had a great hair day. So, that's so called a great collaboration. And that, my friend, is possible. You know, and I think so that's the where great stories device are. remote becoming the phone <laughs> for all Well, say la vie. Is, is the epitome never say of never. that. Yeah? Okay. All right, with this, can you have a huge round of applause for our esteemed panelists? Yeah.